でもう一つ私の Google が今まさに始めということで皆様方と新しいイノベーションを起こしたいと考えているものを次にご紹介したいと思います、えー、Google IO のキーノートの2日目でサプライズとして皆様方にもご紹介しました Google ウェブになります、えー、グレゴリーダワデビッドお願いします Hello. Thanks for the opportunity to talk to, talk to you today. My name is Greg, and I'm a product manager for Google Wave. Today, with Dawa and David, we'll walk you through Google Wave and how it can help make your web experience better,、uh, more collaborative, and more real time. Wave has been developed over the course of the last few years down in Sydney, Australia. Today, what we want to show you is what we call a developer preview. It's not ready for launch yet. Um, in fact, we still have quite a number of bugs and unfinished features. But we are ready to show you exactly what Wave is capable of and to talk through the things that you can do to help make Wave better. Today, we're going to talk through three individual things the product, the platform, and the protocol. While talking through the product, what we'll do is walk you through use cases that you're used to doing every single day. And show you how doing them in Wave can enhance your experience. Second, we'll start talking through the platform. In talking through the platform, we'll show you the various ways that you can use, AP, you can use our APIs to build on top of Wave and actually enhance sites that you already have with Wave. Lastly, we'll talk about the protocol. We want Wave to be open. We want anyone to be able to run a Wave server. And so we're going to talk a little bit about the protocol that we're building and how you can get involved. In order to start talking about Wave, we actually need to go back about 40 years. 40 years ago is about when email came about. This was long before the web, but it was, it was an opportunity that people wanted to start communicating. This was, of course, designed to mimic what currently goes on with postal mail、um, or snail mail, as, as it's often referred, where somebody writes a message, that message is sent to another person, that person can write another message, and that message is sent back to another person. In doing this, you're actually making sure that every single user has their own copy of everything that's going on. While this works well, and frankly,、um, we use email a lot internally. Um, we also feel like it was designed a long time ago before we had the benefit of today's computers, today's network speeds, today's、um, various products such as SMS,、um, blogging,、uh, social networks, the list goes on and on. So, what we're trying to do with Google Wave is show you what email could have been if it was designed today. So, a Wave, the concept behind a Wave is that it's a shared Hosted conversation. And so,、um, in doing this, what it means is that every single user、um, that is added as a participant to this wave can come in, see the content of the wave, contribute to the wave, leave, and other users can then come back in, see what's going on in the wave themselves. So, what you're looking at here is a HTML5 application、uh, written in、uh, Google Web Toolkit. Greg is showing it in Safari and on, the, on the left, and I'm showing it in Firefox on the right. Later on, we'll also show it in Google Chrome. So, the first use case we're going to walk you through is what simple email would look like and does, in fact, look like in, web,、uh, <laughs> in Wave.、Um, so, I have a canned message in here where I'm starting a message to David about our trip to Japan. I've said, I've typed it in. I'm going to add David as a participant, and then David gets it. So I'm going to go into my Wave account, and in my inbox, I see Greg has sent me a message. Once I open it, I can reply to the message, like regular email, and, said, and say something like,、oh, I love Tokyo. When can we go? Now, Let me show you the first benefit of a hosted conversation. You notice that there is a、uh, question in the middle of the message. If this was regular email, what, we'll, what I'll have to do is copy Greg's message out and then hand edit my reply in the middle. 
but with a hosted conversation, I can simply indicate to the server where I want the message to go. So I can say, here, yeah. knowing you, let's take the taxi to the airport. So David's responded to my message. I can go back, look at my inbox, and you'll notice that there's green bars next to both of David's messages that tell me that there's new content to be read. So I'm going to show you the next advantage of doing a hosted conversation. Rather than in today's world, where messages that go back and forth are what you might say uh, um, uh, dead, um, insofar as um, these messages, you actually are every character that we are sending to the server is then reflected back to the other user's wave client. This means that you can have very lively conversations where all of the communication is happening immediately. You don't have to wait to see David's typing, David's typing, David's typing, but rather you can see what's happening on a screen immediately. So I'll respond, we're going very soon. And you can see over on David's screen that everything that I was typing was immediately showing on his screen. Hey, I know there is a great place on George Street. Sure, let's go to where George Street. you can get tickets. Whoa. Um, so what we're showing there is that you can actually start responding as soon as you see what's going on. And this actually will save a lot of time in IM style conversations. All right, so the next thing that I want to show you um, as an added benefit of these hosted conversations is unlike email, where in email, if you wanted to add another person to a conversation, what you'd have to do is take the set of messages that you want that person to have and forward all of them to that person. Um, it gets cumbersome at times when that user is trying to follow the thread as it evolved. So in Wave, what you do is you just grab that user and put him on the wave. And now I've added Dawa to this wave, and he has access to all of this content. And I'm already logged in on a different browser on the same machine here uh, on Chromium. So I switched to that thing. And as you see, the message has now appeared in my inbox here. And all the content here appears for me as unread. And I can space bar through it and catch up on what happened. But you also notice that I never got a chance to really see this message that Greg started typing as, as a whole. And if this conversation would have evolved much more than it was, it would have been hard for me to really reconstruct how the conversation went. That's why we built this little tool here on top called Playback. And it allows me to see that Greg started the conversation, then added David, David replied, another reply, and you see how the whole conversation went ahead. Of course, I can now go ahead and answer to this thing, saying something like, Hmm, it is the internet these days where you buy air tickets so that they know. OK, so now we've shown you how, how a normal conversation flow can go in Wave as opposed to what you're used to doing in email or IM. The next thing we want to show you is let's assume that we've gone to our trip to Japan. In fact, we have. Um, and by the time we get back, we have lots of photos we want to share with the team of what's happened in Japan. Currently, it's very difficult to make an online photo album from a number of people contributing photos. So what you do in Wave is you grab a few photos, drag them on to drag them onto the Wave, and immediately those photos are uploaded, and you can see them showing up on, on Dallas side. So the nice thing here is that, uh, by the way, this is uh, everything here is just standard HTML5. This is the one thing that uh, we use Google Gears for, if you want to reproduce this. But you saw that, um, if you played close attention, that the, the thumbnails of the picture actually appeared on my screen before the upload was done. I can go ahead and say, oh, I took some pictures here too. I'm just going to drag them from the desktop into the wave. And the same thing happens. With a little Network luck. speeds, what they are. Yes. There you go. And there we are. Hooray. My dicks. Better. 
Um, so uh, one of the things you might notice at the bottom of the screen is the images menu. Yeah, so an images menu has appeared here. And it has a number of options of things that you can specifically do with uh, Wave. And as we develop this product over time, we imagine that there will be more context sensitive uh, things like that. So one thing that we have here is view a slideshow. And the nice thing is that um, now since this automatically accesses all the images from, um, that are on the Wave, I, I get this collective slideshow of uh, everything. And I can just mouse over here, click one of these pictures, and uh, you know have an immediate idea of what, what, what things look like. So another option down on that images menu is copy the new wave. Eventually, this menu will actually have lots of things that a lot of photo applications do now, facial recognition, those sort of things. For now, we just have this set. Copy the new wave is what we would do in this situation if we actually did want to share these photos with the rest of our team, but didn't actually want them to see this whole conversation about how I'm not very good at getting up early enough for trains, so I need to take taxis and those sort of things. So what we can do is copy the new wave. And copy the new wave will show all the pictures here. And then we can say, here are our pics from Japan. And you'll notice that it copied all of the photos and not just the photos that I put there. So instead of adding our team right now, um, what we're actually going to do is publish this wave. So um, this is actually the first of our API story that we're going to talk about in a little bit, publishing. We have this participant that you can see here named Bloggy. What Bloggy does, as you just saw, Bloggy says he published this wave here. What Bloggy is actually doing is taking the wave and publishing it to a public site for people to be able to see. I can go to this uh, website, which looks a lot like Blogger, but it's actually just a variety that uh, we have taken. And um, you see that uh, if I go to this page, the same wave loads here uh, inside the Blogger frame. The difference is that this is not just a copy of the images. This is a live version of the thing. So if I go ahead here and think, oh, this is interesting. I've seen these pictures before. I can go ahead and you know, reply using the wave thing and uh, immediately type something like, nice pics, especially the last ones. You, really, you notice how I like my own pictures uh, really the best here. The other thing you notice here is that um, the way that the, the, the res my response immediately shows up on Greg's screen, but the way that the blog looks on my screen, the, the wave that looks on my screen is uh, styled to the um, to the wave environment, to the blogger environment. So as Dao is highlighting, this means that I could see Dao's response on on my blog immediately in my wave client, and so I can then respond directly in my wave client to his comment on the blog. Um, why do you always like your own pictures? I can't type in front of lots of people. And I can then uh, either continue the conversation publicly on the blog here, but uh, since I replied to this wave, this wave is now also in my uh, inbox here. And uh, I can uh, go directly and com continue the conversation in the, in the wave client. So. Now what we want to show you is the last benefit that we're going to show in terms of the product of Wave. Um, and this is, since everybody is being partaking in these online hosted conversations, this means that everybody actually has the ability to edit these hosted conversations. So if I go here and hit Edit, I can start typing in names of these photos. And I have no idea what they're actually named, so I'll just make things up. Big house big city. And you'll notice that you'll notice at the top of the screen that Takuya has come in and started typing in Japanese. And Dawa is likely somewhere in there typing as well. I'm um, <laughs> so one of the things that you can see are you can see the cursors. So you can see where everybody is actually typing. Let me move this out of the way. Um, so you can see the cursors to see where everyone's actually typing. And you can see that you can have mixed character sets within a single wave. And we support a large number of character sets already. Thank you. Um, so that's um, the one last thing we wanted to show is mobile. So we have actually created a mobile version of Google Wave as well. You'll notice that it looks just like the desktop version. 
In fact, it is running the desktop version's code. It is Google Web Toolkit that enabled us to do this easily. What we've essentially done is it's created a different scheme that looked slightly differently for the mobile client. And using Google Web Toolkit, we've only used um, approximately 5% additional engineering time to make it work on a mobile client like this. So that's what we wanted to talk to you about in terms of the product. But now we want to get into the meat of what you, would re you are likely here to want to hear about, which is the platform. Now, we only have a, a um, slight, uh, we don't have a lot of time here. So, but if you, if you <laughs> want to learn more about it, we have a session at the end of the day, which is parallel to the party. So I'm sure you'll all prefer coming to my session about API than silly party things. Um, but uh, real quickly, we have uh, three components of our uh, API embedding, which we showed just now in, in Blogger. And then we have a uh, client-side component, which is based on the open social gadgets that lets you uh, put gadgets inside of Waves and uh, interact with them that way. And we have a server-side component, which uh, we, li we like to call robots. Robots are like uh, human participants, except for that they're powered by, uh, by uh, well, software. The, the one that we have uh, developed and prepared for you today is, uh, is a bridge with uh, Twitter, and it shows you how you can communicate with uh, external participants. Uh, this application has been built on top of uh, App Engine, and the source code is available, so you could really uh, build this sort of thing uh, really yourself. So I can, well, the first thing that happens if I start a new wave with Twitter is that this um, form gets inserted in the wave that lets me log into Twitter, and I can go ahead and if I know my password, uh, actually sign in. And with a little luck, yeah, you see that now the, the, the tweets immediately start uh, streaming in. And uh, that way, I can uh, you know, communicate with my friends on Twitter using, uh, using Wave. And I can use the reply function here and immediately type something. And that will be converted into one of those ads reply things in Twitter. That way, the synchronicity works nicely. Now, Greg will tell us something about the client enhancements that you can do using Wave. So as Dawa mentioned, um, the client enhancements are done through gadgets. So the first gadget I'm going to show you is chess. Dawa and Greg played chess. And yes, we're going to try to play chess in front of a lot of people. I suspect it won't go well. Um, but in this chessboard, one of the things that you'll be able to see, as once I add Dawa, you'll be able to see, so I go first, and then Dawa moves. Well, Dawa is loading his client. <laughs> then, um, then Dawa will move. And one of the things you can see here is that immediately what Dawa does shows up on my screen. The advantage of building gadgets for Wave is that, as a developer, you don't have to worry about and take care of the communication happening on the back end. As long as you are writing into our XML layer, we will then take care of all that communication. And so everything that you do can instantly show up on another user's, um, in another user's Wave client. The other added bonus that give, this gives you when you write into our XML is little niceties such as playback. So you can see here. By the way, this game doesn't actually pay attention to whose move it is, so I could right. go ahead so, and move the whole game. But right. just for demo purposes, that's quite nice. Um, so you can see here that I added Dawa, and then Dawa made a lot of moves in the game that I should have been making. Um, but you'll see that, that playback actually um, comes for free when you build the gadget here. Um, the one last gadget that I do want to show you um, is the movie gadget. Um, or also known as our yes, no, maybe gadget. You see, um, we actually had a situation where everybody wanted to go to a movie, but we wanted to get a list of who wanted to go or not. Um, in, the, in the old way of doing things, you would send an email around. Some people would respond. It would get very disorganized very quickly. Um, so somebody built this gadget where everyone can go in and just click yes, no, maybe, depending on what they want to do if they want to go to the movie. The, the reason that this is useful and important to see is because you can see that gadgets can be used not just um, for, for communication such as a game, but to actually enhance the communication of a wave itself. You can put as many gadgets into a wave as you'd like. Now, uh, as a final demonstration of a robot that uh, we had lots of fun with, uh, I'll, uh, I have for you here Rosie, which was actually built by our friends in uh, Google Translate. 
Rosie lets me do multi-language communication by real-time translation. Now, I'm going to put my preferred language onto Japanese, which will hopefully have the... Now, if I go ahead and reply to this thing, and I say something like, I love Japan. Who knows? Maybe it translated into Japanese. <laughs> and then, if Dawa adds... But, uh, I, I added you, you guys. Uh, Dr. Wave needs to be added. Oh, Dr. Wave needs to be added. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Wave is my alter ego. I could also uh, speak in my own language, which is not English. And, uh... and one of the things that you'll see is that since I chose English, I'm seeing English on my screen. Since Dawa chose Japanese, he's seeing it translated into Japanese. But what the language that the person is typing in is irrelevant to us. OK, so that's our platform story. So the last thing I want to touch on is protocol. As I mentioned at the beginning, Wave is designed to be an open system. We want everyone to be able to build and run their own Wave servers. So um, we are going to be open sourcing uh, we're going to, excuse me, be creating an open source reference implementation with a lion's share of the client code open sourced um, later on this year. So this will allow people to build their own Wave servers and to run them so that everyone can communicate together in Wave. So to, to wrap up, we talked about um, the product, the platform, and the protocol. And this was... Um, those are, those are some links to get more information about these three areas. Um, and we really hope, oh, I'm sorry, the one thing I should have mentioned is everybody here will get accounts on Wave um, within a few weeks. We're going to be sending out an email to, every, to all of the attendees so that you can try Wave for yourself and start to build on our APIs and let us know what you think. Thank you very much.